I've been told that you were born again, basically, three or four months ago, that you found a place where, and I'd like you to explain this to me, the toad. I'd like you to explain the toad to me. Do you understand the toad? Is it like ayahuasca? No, it takes you to another level. Ayahuasca is nothing compared to this. Is it called DMT? Yes. The toad in this, in the Sonora Desert, and has the venom in it. And you smoke it. Once I tried it, boom! Everything is went so fast. And when I fell out, the only thing I was conscious about was out. My brain was still functioning, my thoughts, I could still talk to myself, I could hear my mind. And I was saying, I fucked up. And I killed myself. Because you killed the yeah. ego. I was like, I'm dying. It is really mind blowing. Spiritual in nature, though, right? Yeah, like you're just. Yeah, I really, um, my whole life totally changed. It sounds like a, a movie strip, a script, but it's really um, the real deal. At that moment, you're talking about like you come to and you are altered. You are altered and it stayed. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I wake up, I'm happy, I'm laughing, I'm smiling. I'm saying, what the f really? What happened? Yeah. Really? I had no idea. So, sex, it cocaine, for, championship it belt, it those forever. weren't happiness. Nothing, no. It lasts forever, but it was only 15 minutes, but it felt like hours. Mm -hmm. It was frightening. Because of that ego thing, because you yeah. realize you're small all of yeah, a sudden. Yeah, once I realized that I'm nothing, yeah. I realized mean, all my fancy clothes, my big clothes. Can you explain to me why it makes you emotional just talking about it? Because I imagine the, the reason it makes you emotional is because for four decades you've been trying to find happy, man. Well, you know, when you think you know everything, then you realize you don't know anything. Mm -hmm. That's a big awakening. You can call it growth or you can call it divine intervention. You do realize you're talking about the toad like someone would talk about God, right? Well, I don't know. I'm not going to say it's God. I'm not going to put nothing in the, um, the same breath as God. Can you explain how it changed you? It was just the death of your ego. You died when your ego died. You felt so, I felt so naked and afraid at that particular time because um, that's all I really had when you really think about it was my ego. That's interesting because your ego served you too, or oh, in some no of the doubt. ways other people would measure success. Oh, no doubt, 100 percent. It made me that guy that I really wasn't interested in as I got older. But that made me a very um, special and famous person. What can you tell me about how that ego was formed? Well, it all started with customized. I never knew what an ego was until he expressed to me what an ego was and how successful. The most successful people have the biggest egos. I believe he will be the youngest heavyweight champion of all time. And I just believed what he told me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And everything he told me it was right. Everything he told me gave me success and gave me all the power that I thought I ever wanted. Did Cuss give you any of the tools to shut off the ego? No. Why would, I do, why would he do that? All, anything that um, I had was my ego. Is that the first time you felt sort of love and safety? 100%, yeah. I can say honestly, I have a very deep affection for him. I do. And he gives me the motivation. I will stay alive, and I will watch him become a success. Because I will not leave until that happens. He was my, my right hand man from the beginning till he died. I didn't want to let Cuss down. The only guy that believed in me. The only guy. When you look back at his love and that discipline, have you had another love like that in your life that felt like that? Because that was the first time you felt cared for. I love Cuss as a father, but Cuss is really like a general. And you have to listen to the general. You have to believe everything. You were a soldier. You have to believe everything the generals say is right. Mm -hmm. You can't second guess it. But do you now look back and be like, I, I could have gotten a little more no, compassion well, listen, here? I wouldn't have the relationships with my children that I had with Cuss. No, I wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. But I would. But I'm so happy that I did have a relationship like that with him. I wouldn't want it to change any other way. Was there any joy in your childhood? I like him. Joy when, when I made Cuss Tomato happy. So that was it. That's what love felt like, yeah, succeeding for him. Making him happy, yeah. Making him happy, accomplishing, feeding yeah. your ego, yeah. and then your yeah. ego becomes a monster. Yeah, big time. And did you realize that your ego was a problem as you were climbing up? No, no my ego gave me everything I wanted. Mm -hmm. How could that be a monster? What was that like, to be the youngest heavyweight champion? Did you get to 
enjoy it? Or was it just pressure, leeches, trust problems, betrayal, that everything that came with money and success after that? Yeah, but that? I thought that's, was, that's what it was. I was groomed to be Goliath. I wasn't groomed to be David. Even though I was small, I was the David guy because I'm smaller than mm -hmm. everybody. But I was groomed to be Goliath because I'm so insecure. I was a monster because um, that's all I really knew. And that's all I wanted to be because I was the most successful fighter. But um, the way I was promoted, I'm Goliath, I'm a killer. Nobody's gonna ever feel sorry for me.